Have you ever paid attention to the approach lights leading up to the runway? Here's the approach to runway 19 center at Dulles. This is what's called an ALSF2. You can see it diagrammed out on the approach plate for the ILS. This is a high intensity lighting system with sequenced flashing lights. Flashing lights lead towards the roll bar, which together with the red side row lights help with horizontal perception. The decision altitude for the ILS approach to this runway is 472 feet, a standard 200 feet above the touchdown zone elevation. This is where we are right now. This is our view at decision altitude on the glide slope of the ILS approach. One thing to notice before we talk about the approach lights, the pappy lights on the right side of the runway are showing all four red, but we just said we were on the glide slope. You'll often see this where the ILS glide slope and the pappy angle aren't coincident and this is called out on the approach plate. It says the VGSI will take you to a threshold crossing height of 72 feet, while the glide slope has a threshold crossing height of just 54 feet. Even though both use the same three degree angle, you'd be higher with two whites and two reds than you'd be on the ILS glide slope here. Hence, we see four reds. Now the approach lighting system runs 2,400 feet from the threshold. The localizer only minimums for the approach are, not surprisingly, 2,400 feet, RVR 24. If the visibility is below RVR 2400, we won't be able to see the runway environment from over the beginning of the approach lights and we won't be able to descend to land per 91.175. However, the ILS allows lower visibility, RVR 1800. From where we are, just over the fence, decision height on the glide slope, 1800 feet towards the runway takes us to the roll bar. And this is sometimes called the decision bar. If we can see the decision bar from the decision altitude, we have the required 1800 feet of visibility. That's neat, huh? We can continue the approach because we have the approach lights in sight and have the required flight visibility. Now, can we go down to the runway and land? Because we have the approach lighting system, we can go down to 100 feet above the touchdown zone elevation, but can only go below that if we have the runway environment in sight, which we do not, or have the red terminating or side row bars visible, which we do, but maybe intermittently. This allows us, from this position, to continue the approach below decision altitude and land. As we continue into 100 feet above touchdown zone elevation, we need to have those red bars clearly visible or the runway environment, both of which we do have. This allows us to continue down and land. So in this way, a precision approach lighting system acts as a built-in 91.175 determination machine. If you see the approach lights, you can go below DA. If you're at the decision altitude and can see the decision bar, you have the required visibility, the 1800. If you have the red side row bars, you can continue below 100 feet above touchdown and land. No need to guess if you have the required visibility or not. It's the precision of this approach lighting that allows for approaches to such low minimums like RVR 1800. Without it, when we consult the in-op components table, we see that without the ALS F2, we need to push our visibility minimums to RVR 4000. That would take us back here, well before that fence where we were at decision altitude. This effectively pushes the decision altitude higher. On the glide slope, we'd be higher than 200 feet above touchdown this far out. If you don't do a lot of approaches down to precision minimums, you may take approach lighting for granted, but on an approach on a foggy day, seeing the approach lights emerge from the mist is a huge relief to many pilots. For more great instrument training, check out IFR Ground School today at the link here and in the description.